at the time when we started, like, there was no grime rave. So it's just a change from what we usually do, you know? I think we just, like, made it club music again. Like, you see house, techno, drum and bass, dubstep, grime. And we've helped it slot in there. Obviously now, people have in their mind what it could, could look like. But at that time, people were like, why would you want to have a grime rave all night? Why would you want to listen to the same music all night? The grime set that you heard at a club was very direct because you'd only get an hour of it. But then when you're given eight hours, you can go a bit deeper on different ends of the spectrum. Whether that crosses into funky, what people say is funky, or people say is garage, grime, faster tempos. But it's, that, it's the same mood and vibe and energy of the rest, you know? Just being given that much freedom because there's no expectations or anything, you can kind of do what you want. You see what I'm saying? It's not very immediate. Yeah, I see that you leave it. Just a bit there. Just a bit there. My name's Spooky, DJ, producer, remixer. I run Ghost House Records as well. So yeah, more like a jack of all trades, really, you know. <laughs> Been out here since the beginning of Grime. I think people just letting go of that stigma they had about Grime before, like, oh, Grime is this, Grime is that. And I think people will see it as, Oh yeah, it's just full of angry kids and this and the other. No, it's not. Like, it's full of grown ups. <laughs> so I think from time people realise that it's like, okay, grime never really went anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, for me, grime never died. Like, it did take a dip. Like, it's had its up and downs, but now we're just on the up and it's definitely opened up. You know, why would someone want to work with a particular record label? Like, I preach independence heavily, so how can I ask an artist to be part of Butters or work with us? If I tell everyone to, to do everything themselves, DIY. If you do something in isolation, you're not going to have the same feedback system, maybe the same drive to make something slightly better than what, what you can. Yeah, I'm DJ Q, I'm affiliated with the Butters label. Me and Elijah have been speaking for a long time. I've released tracks on the label as well, done remixes. So it made sense to come in the studio and make some magic. Yeah, the way, the way Butters work is, is, is wicked because it does open up the sound to new people. They bring the old stuff, they bring in new people like Flavor D, Royalty, alongside legends that have been around for ages like DWE, Fotse. P money and stuff like that, man. It's like bringing every sound together as one and just pushing it as a unit. I just play everything that I've grown up listening to. I've been a heavy garage fan and then when garage split up into bass, line and grime, I was into both things. So I just carry that on today in the music that I make and what I play. Yeah, I, th I think um, with music, if it's a big track, then it'll live on forever. Music's timeless, especially when you get it right. Like this is a proper example of how London's changing because you got the shard like London Bridge whole like redevelopment thing going on. But this is the infamous arch where we used to do raves here, cable from 2011 to 2013. And today is actually the day we did our last party two years ago on the dock. So behind here, like everything went down and now it's just like 
an emergency exit for a station that's not even finished yet. So. Club Cable, Elijah and Studio. No, it is like the parties. The parties would have happened anyway. The kind of opportunity that we got to take it to a big club first. That that was more the thing. You know what I mean, like to do to have like Grime in a big room again was like the first time here, like for us anyway. <laughs> and then we only did five parties here, but people were still going on about it. Unfortunately, cable got closed down. Um, it was forced upon them and that was a real shame that happened but one of the blessings from my side was that the guys were then able to come back. Some people say about certain Butters tracks that, oh, that's not grime. But I think I've heard Elijah say in an interview, well, that doesn't really bother him. It's kind of, this is what we do as a label and maybe we, we kind of, we're not purist grime, but I, I like what they do. and. That allows you as a promoter to work with these guys curating and go, okay, well, it doesn't have to be just a purist lineup. We can do something different in the show. You know, we, we can have a bit of a curveball in there to change it up a little bit and look a little bit different um, to perhaps a straight grime night. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 What's happened with Grime over the past 18 months or two years has just been phenomenal. I mean, it's, it's always been there. It's been a very, it's a huge part of London musical culture. Started with whatever, five, six hundred people that got it. And now we can do that in multiple cities around the country and a few other places, little spots in different countries. People feel like there's an audience already there, so people that are established don't feel like we're taking from them. They feel like they're adding to what we do. And then someone that's not as established can see like someone who was already making music like Flavor D being welcomed into an audience or put forward into an audience of people that would be interested in what she's doing. I'm a DJ slash producer. I play what I produce, sort of anything from garage, two-step, house, gritty bass lines, grime. I play my own tunes when I get booked for sets and stuff, so. Producing started from early, that when I was a kid, when I had like battery keyboards. But properly when I was 16, because I was working in a record store and my boss was like making tunes and stuff he was using Ableton and then he just gave me a copy took it home basically taught myself yeah I was just like one of these teenagers that just I'd rather stay in my bedroom like a hermit and um, mm, but it worked out well though Still needs a lot of work, like the sub and stuff needs adjusting, but yeah, it's got a few different elements, like after the drop, it goes into a um, uh, breakdown. It was two years ago, so my first actual time, my first sort of gig was a boiler room, and I didn't even know what a boiler room was. <laughs> it wasn't the best set, but um, ever since then, I, it just sort of like inspired me to properly get into it, you know. I'd never been in an environment where I played my own tunes before and um, it obviously opened up a lot of doors and, um, you know, booking inquiries that... And I went from there, bought some decks, taught myself, learnt on being on rinse and whilst I was at gigs and I went from there. Seen a lot more girls coming into the range now. And it's like it's, sometimes it's the girls that are going more crazy than the guys. I don't know whether that's because we've had like Flavor D on board and like people, just, like the kind of music she plays, it attracts them a bit more. Sometimes when we do the nights, people will only come for them and then they get swamped with all this other music and they get into butters through that. And they're like, oh, sick, like, who's this guy? Who's this person? 
and then they've kept coming back over the years, you know? Like the perfect thing as butters to be seen as like is like the go-between of like electronic music and then but we creep into things like on the kind of like urban tip, you know what I'm saying? Like with the MCs. And just knowing your role in different scenarios. Like MCs and stuff, they 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 knew us, but because we weren't really reaching out to them and we had built something already, like I said, it's that thing where, okay, you've got an audience and you're inviting me, whatever, then it's good. It's not like we're relying on anyone to to sell our night for us. I'm on a path, don't get in the mix. I'm on a path, don't get in the mix. But I've had no choice, now I'm loading six. But I've had no choice, now I'm loading six. Put my life on the line, on the roads I'm fine. Put my life on the line, on the roads I'm fine. If beef is a laugh all day, every time, and you might walk out with scars. It's the passion, the vision, when it takes people like Elijah, the skill they see like a, a little gem that could do with an extra bit of polishing. There you go, man. And then I, I'll pick up that, that's vision for me. Sometimes you need people that, that just understand, want you to do well as much as you need to do for yourself kind of thing. And I, I think they're deeper fans, first and foremost. And I think sometimes when you're a fan of something first, you get the right drive to do something right, you know what I mean? Elijah Skilliam is stepping up. Make some noise for Elijah Skilliam. I've been doing this music for quite a while now, but these people have come in, or this, this thing, Butters, has come in at my level. It's come in at my level, you know what I mean? It's, it's not like, oh, who, like, what's this, this Butters thing? Like, what's that? They came in so professional. It was like, do I join them? Do I, do I uh, work with them? Or, you know what I mean? Like, right, I need, I need to know what's going on with this, with this Butters thing, you know what I'm saying? And I think that's what everyone gets from it, man. Even when I, when I perform, it's, when I perform, I performed at clubs before, but when I'm performing as a butter's night at the same club, it's like a, it's like a level of class, I'll say, a level of class. So yeah, I think they br definitely brought that to the table. And the more people that bring that to the table in our scene, the more our scene gets seen as more classy, man, and more professional. Hey, pull up that. I love MC, I love MC culture in England. So I didn't really reach out to them and be like, yeah, sit, come and spit on these beats. Like, cause it just needed the music, the sonic, everything just to be the way I wanted it to be or the way we wanted it to be. And then sometimes we'll be in the background, but we can still definitely program like a good show. There's definitely different roles that we can play as DJs, as like creators, that kind of people. I can make like, I can make these with my eyes closed. I think it just comes from listening to different types of music. It's got, I don't think it's got anything to do with grime or garage. I've made tracks with a similar vibe to this before, but I just want to keep on developing different ideas and bettering myself with each release, basically. Not after making each track everyone's favourite song, but just like trying to experiment and develop stuff to just create better music or whatever. It all started off with this little, I had a couple um, little vocal samples. It was like this one. That I've like transposed. And it was usually, it was that against the, the beat that I kind of made with it. I've always had music around me and I always say it to this day, like the best thing my mum and dad ever did was let me have my own music collection like when I was really young. I still had to get like <laughs> my mum to buy me like Dizzy Rascal's album and stuff and like my pocket money and shit. And just like she let me like listen to that sort of stuff which is, which is really cool. So when, when you get money and you buy records, 
you get money in, you, you, your money goes back out on records. So it, it, it's, it's kind of cyclical. And it's, it's, it's always been like that. So, like when I was young, I was getting pocket money, coming in, go to the record shop the week, get records, got no money again. It's always, it's always been kind of going back into the music as they're kind of progressing. Like you, when you do shows, you reinvest the, the, the pay into getting new equipment so that you can carry on. We recorded the trumpets in LA, did all the guitars in LA, the vocals in LA. The whole idea was done in LA. Something I say is just try and be honest with it, you know what I mean? Like with the music. If it's going to be London to LA, then it must have a name and in there as well as a G font bounce. Just because that's how I grew up, listening to flipping G funk and amens, isn't it? <laughs> you know what I mean? So. We were kind of the misfits, to be fair. It's not like any of us were like, had an like, overwhelming response to everything we did, do you know what I mean? Like, there was a struggle that we all had in common. Royalty had to prove who Royalty is. Like, I had to prove who I am, these guys have had to, and we've seen each other do that. And now we're just seeing Flavor D do that. And it's just like, there's, there's an element of, of that too, like, the underdog in all of us. Sometimes it's nice to be underrated. You don't disappoint when you're when you're underrated. And I think at times all of us have been underrated or maybe felt underrated. Looking back at it, though, it seems like so obvious that this was going to happen, in a way. <laughs> but it, no, but it like yeah. we did work towards yeah, yeah, yeah. it, and this is stuff we've always been interested in. Like you spend all your time collecting tunes, listening to music, and DJing. It's like, I've had keyboards under my nose from however, yeah. so it kind of makes sense that we would devote our lives to this. But at the same time, you never see this coming in the, in the way that it's been. You know, they say the label's nothing about the artist. True. No point having like some strong brand record label and then the artist, you know, not really doing well or it's just me or Will killing it. It's like, no, nah, everyone that we work with does their own thing in their own way and finds an audience for, the, for what they want to do. So Leeds is tonight is uh, Big Nasty, P Money and his crew, OGs, and me, me and Skillium. And it's like a low ceiling vibe, sick hype energy. And it's, like one of my favourite parties to do in the country, man. It, it kind of it kind of just started off small. It was just, and then it kind of grew. We got kind of opportunities to, to take it outside of London. And Leeds is by far the, the the most energetic. Everyone's out there. They they love to just party. I mean, just a good a good party that you just want to play at. Sick lineup, I'm buzzing, can't wait, man. P fucking money is a dog. Why are you saying? Yeah. I'm chance. so excited, it's gonna be such a good night. Yeah. Graham and right now is in a good place, it's, um, it's, get, it's getting there. Some things just have to take its course, and some things need maturity and and understanding to make it go forward and just give God thanks that it's happening now. Yeah man, big up to Butters every time. They've continued to release good instrumentals, not just like anything typical eight bar, repeat, nothing like that. They release quality music with quality mix downs and whatnot and they've given people a chance to actually listen to Grime and respect it as like a proper scene. You know what I mean? They, they are the grand dons, you could say. Do you know what I mean? So they bring a lot to the table. 
they're actually putting grime on the map. There are a few key people that are actually going places and promoting grime, not themselves. Many artists are going places and just promoting themselves, just going out and performing their own tunes, where people like myself and Butters are actually going places and playing other people's tunes and introducing them like, yo, this is grime music, like forget whatever else you've heard, this is grime, this is what's really going on, this is what we like. Oh, 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 o